This is the third video on basic modelling and we're going to consider heat flow for blocks in series. In particular we're going to look at steady state heat flow. Again we're not going to uh, consider transient temp changes in temperature due to the uh, capacitance of blocks. And just look at steady state. Now steady state heat flow could be considered in joules per second or watts and we're also going to look at this in a single dimension because this is an introductory course and we don't want to over complicate things so we're going to ignore interactions from other directions or heat loss in other directions we're going to assume a constant cross-sectional area all along the length and we're going to assume that heat flow is created by a temperature difference between the two ends of a block. So if one end is hot and the other end is cold, then heat will go from the hot end to the cold end at a steady rate. Now, the flow or the heat flow rate in watts W is going to be proportional with a constant which depends on the cross-sectional area of the block and the conductivity, and it will also clearly depend on the temperature difference. So a simple linear relationship is going to hold, and we'll explain this in the next slide. What we want to know is what's the impact of adding more conductors in series. So first, a bit of background to get the, uh, the viewer to think a little about their experience. What happens when you're in a cold environment and you put on an extra layer of clothes? Does that increase or reduce the heat flow from your body to the environment? Or in other words, do you feel warmer or colder. What happens with roof insulation? So if you put roof insulation um, in your roof space, which basically is like adding an extra layer, does it reduce the heat flow from the house to the environment or increase the heat flow from the house to the environment? Or what happens if you double the length of an insulated metal rod and you hold one end and put the other end in a very hot fire? Does the length of the rod have an impact on the temperature of the end that you are holding? Now hopefully you'll all agree from your personal experience that if you add these extra layers, which is the same as adding more conductors in series, you actually reduce the overall heat flow. Now it's important that you've got this basic common sense and engineering intuition behind what happens next. So when you see the results, you say, that's just what I expected. That makes sense. Here we go then. We've got a simple block with a temperature T1 at one end and T2 at the other end. And we want to know what's the rate of heat flow or the steady heat flow W from one end to the other. What we're going to do is we're going to say in general you can approximate this by an expression of this type. So you see I've got temperature difference on the left T1 minus T2 is some constant KH times the heat flow W. Again, as in the previous video, we're not going to dwell too much on the details of the units because that will distract from the key concepts that we're trying to communicate. Analogies then. Let's look at the expressions that we've got from an electrical circuit with a single resistor, or a pipe with a pressure difference, or here, a conductor with a temperature difference. What do you notice? Well, all three components we're talking about flow rate. It could be the flow of current, it could be the flow of fluid, or it could be the flow of energy, i.e. power. In all three cases, there's something which drives this flow. It could be a voltage difference in the electrical circuit, a pressure difference in the pipe, or a temperature difference okay, for the conductor. If we now look at the sort of equations that we've ended up with, <coughs> you'll see we've got a voltage difference. I'll just put those voltages on here, V1 and V2. So a voltage difference drives a current, and it depends on a constant R. We've got a pressure difference drives a fluid flow, and depends on a constant Kp. And we've got a temperature difference drives an energy flow, W, and depends on a constant Kh. All these systems have analogous expressions. They all look the same. They've got the same structure. What happens then if I place two blocks in series. Now, because these are in series, then there's an underlying assumption that the heat flow through both blocks must be the same. 
OK, so although I've sort of put a gap here so you can see there's two blocks in practice, what we're going to assume is those two blocks are touching each other, but at the join, the temperature is T2. And at the far end, we're going to have a temperature T3. And what I want to know is, OK, what's the heat flow through these two, two blocks which I've now placed in series? Now, I'm going to analyse each block in turn using the result from the previous slide. So if I look at this first block, I've got a temperature difference T1 minus T2. So I can write T1 minus T2 equals K H1 times W, where W is the heat flow through that block. For the second block, I can write T2 minus T3 equals K H2 times W. Now, what we've noted at the top is that this W and this W must be the same. Because they've been arranged in series, I've got the same heat flow through both blocks. So now I can add these two equations and end up with T1 minus T3 equals KH1 plus KH2 times W. And hopefully you'll recognize that this has the same form as we've been deriving in previous slides. Key observation, resistance to heat flow is increased and hence the power is reduced. So by adding an extra conductor, I've actually reduced how much heat flow is going through. I've increased the resistance, reduced the heat flow by adding a conductor in series. Some analogies then. We've looked at three different systems, electrical resistors, pipes, and now conductors. All of them have some form of flow. Current flow, fluid flow, heat flow. They all have something which drives the flow. It could be a voltage difference, a pressure difference, or a temperature difference. And for all of them, the resistance to flow increases as you add more components in series. And you'll see <coughs> here we've got analysis expressions. So the voltage difference drives the current, and we've got to add the resistances of the series blocks to get the effective resistance. We've got pressure difference here. We've got a fluid flow F here. And the link between them two is the sum of the resistances to flow of all the pipes. And if we look at the heat, you'll see we've got a temperature difference driving the heat. There's the heat flow W here, and the link between the two is this constant, which is the sum of the resistances of all of the conductors. So final observations. When blocks are placed in series, the overall resistance to heat flow increases, so the heat flow reduces. Resistances in series add together to give the total resistance, which is why the resistance increases. And the behavior of um, blocks in series is analogous to resistors or electrical resistors in series and fluid pipes in series. And just to um, close the loop on this engineering intuition, clearly when you add an extra layer of clothing, it's like adding a block in series and therefore increasing the resistance. And so heat flow reduces and we feel warmer.